Marilyn, just to follow up, I know some of these signs and symptoms may seem obvious, like the hallucinogenic dreams. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't necessarily be part of normal adolescence or sort of mm -hmm. middle school going into high school behavior. Mm -hmm. But I know there are some signs and symptoms that are just part of adolescent behavior, and I know it can be confusing for a parent to say, well, are they just being a kid? You know, they're changing friend groups, or, you know, that's what kids do. Right. So are there any rules of thumb, I guess, to tease out whether your kid is trying substances, alcohol, pot, whatever, or are they just being kids? Right. Very good question. Um, I think that, in general, parents will, we jump immediately and say, oh, it's a phase. Oh, it's hormones, you know, uh, and, and part of it can be hormonal related. We're talking about uh, an age group where we're dealing with huge changes hormonally. And yes, those hormones cause changes in the body and cause changes in neurology and the brain function. So it's going to show up in, in behavioral changes. There's mood swings. And uh, I've had parents say, well, how do you tell the difference between this, this mood swing of being really happy and then crying as to being drug related. Whenever there is a question, what you might want to look for is one thing is um, whether or not this is rotating around something. For example, are we seeing a child who seems to be animated, normal, and happy on Friday? And I say this to teachers as well because sometimes teachers will see things that parents don't. You have a, a child in school is very animated and answering questions and raising their hand. And then on s Monday, we have someone who is just like a, a zombie, an empty shell, depressed, not answering questions, not animated, not talking. And that you will see with a stimulant drug that may be abused over the weekend. If you're seeing this cycle with your child, from Friday to Monday, this happening all the time, you have to wonder that something is happening over the weekend. Normal mood changes are not going to occur around like a date as, as like Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing. Um, you may also notice, especially with adolescent girls, that they have um, hormonal changes causing behavioral changes around their cycle their menstrual cycle. So I could often tell I have three daughters, so I see the, uh, the fluctuations occurring around their cycle, and I could always tell where they were in their cycle uh, as far as, as some hormonal changes. You will see girls becoming much more emotional and crying more and uh, just, just more mood swings as they get closer and closer to the time of, of having their period. So that's normal. When in doubt, look at the eyes. None of these things are going to cause eyes to widely dilate or sharply constrict. The only time you are going to see those extremes in the pupils of the eyes are with drugs. The brain cannot make those kinds of wide changes. If you're in a bright room like we are, we have a lot of lights. You expect the, the eyes to dilate, I mean, to, excuse me, to, to constrict slightly because of, of protecting the, the retina, protecting the eye. If you're out in bright sunlight, if you're inside and the room is dimmed, you expect the pupils to open up a little. But if it looks strange, it's way more dilated or way more constricted than you've ever seen before that looks unusual, it is not caused by the brain. It's not caused by hormones. It's caused by the drugs because drugs will take over the brain's functions and will control the brain and therefore controlling the eyes. So when in doubt, look at the eyes. Marilyn, do you have any specific advice for parents as far as how to try to keep their middle schooler away from alcohol, tobacco, drugs, tobacco and drugs as long as possible. I mean, I know it's always keep talking, keep listening, be a role model. I don't know if there's a few rules of wisdom you, you have and, and live by. Well, those are, are two really good ones. I think that, number one, kids do 
learn more from watching us than listening to us. And we do have to watch our behaviors around uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, which when I t talk to parents, sometimes I know that uh, that may be a tough issue because sometimes I have parents in my classes that smoke cigarettes and, and like to have a little wine or something with a meal or, or have a drink at, uh, on the weekends. And, and that's okay, but just watch your behavior around them and show them that you're being cautious even with those things, uh, that you're choosing not to drive when you're having a few drinks. Uh, perhaps you want to watch your prescription drug or your over-the-counter drug usage. Um, we are seeing a connection especially this part of the country, we're dealing with a lot of the narcotic painkillers. We have a huge problem with Oxycontin and other prescription drugs like Percocets and Vicodins and heroin. And because they are in the, they're in the same group, they are the narcotic painkillers, as I said, we're seeing kids starting to abuse at a young age these prescription drugs. And because it is so expensive, once they become addicted, they can't keep up that habit. It's one thing to take one pill recreationally on the weekends, uh, but it's another thing to be addicted to it and need two or three pills a day. We're talking about hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. a day. So once that habit gets to that point, they need to switch to heroin, which will give them the same high, but at a fraction of the cost, just a few dollars a day. It's a huge difference. So that's why we're seeing such a huge problem with heroin right now, and OxyContin leads into that. So what I say to parents is watch your prescription usage. Make sure that they know that you're using the drug because it has been, number one, prescribed by a doctor so that uh, a doctor is watching and monitoring your usage to keep, to keep, them, keep you safe and healthy. Um, that you also are taking the appropriate dosage and you would never take more than what the doctor tells you to take. Make sure your kids know that because our kids are not born knowing all of this information. We need to let them know a lot of this stuff. Don't leave your prescription drugs hanging around. If you have a hiding place, even lock it up <laughs> or keep it in your purse, keep it on your body, keep it with you. Uh, you don't want to let this out of your sight. You may not notice if a pill or two is, is missing. And when you're done with a prescription, get rid of it. We have a tendency to keep stuff, you know, because we might six months down the road throw our back out. We might need it later. Uh, we don't want to flush the pills because they cost so much money. We worry about money and we don't worry about our kids. <laughs> so we keep these drugs in our medicine cabinet, forget about them, and our kids stumble across them later. And that's a problem. And they're out of sight, out of mind. We forget that they're there. So get rid of old drugs. Do not keep them around. You want to flush them or put them down the garbage disposal or contact your public health department, find out how they want you to get rid of them. But please don't keep them hanging around and forget about them because that will, will help to decrease the problems that we're having with heroin right now and heroin overdoses, which is a huge problem. <laughs> You also want to make sure that you do talk to your kids. That is an excellent point you brought up. Um, parents often think that um, you know they have to start talking to their kids when they hit middle school. We, we all, as parents, start to get worried. They're no longer babies anymore. They're off into middle school, and we worry about what they're going to be running into, what they'll be exposed to in middle school and high school. If you wait that long, you're going to miss the boat. You need to start talking to your kids as early as possible. Obviously, you're going to tailor it to the appropriate age level. But we talk to our children about 
not getting into cars with strangers at a very young age and not taking candy from strangers um, so that we can get them ready for uh, protecting themselves if they become to be abducted or, or something like that. So why should we wait until something happens to start talking to them about drugs? Um, one thing that studies show is um, reading to your children books about how the body works. 